those abs nice and tight. If you want to eat the muffin, kid, eat the muffin. I don't want to. Well, I didn't make it to be a TV hood ornament. That right there is the healthiest poppy seed muffin you will ever eat. I made it with whole wheat, unsweetened almond milk, and grapeseed oil. It is so healthy, in fact, it hardly qualifies as a muffin. Quit trying to get me to eat the muffin. All right, well then, stop staring at it for a second and look at me. You have been kicking toned ass the last couple weeks. Thank you. But it feels obsessive. You've already thrown away half of the stuff in our kitchen. It wasn't organic. You go to weight group every single day. Last night, I think you were treadmilling in your sleep. And, you know, we haven't really been connecting. We had sex two days ago. I know, and you were checking your Fitbit calorie burn the whole time. All right, I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first big event that I've been paid to sing at, and it needs to go amazing, and I gotta fit in that dress. I know, and you're gonna, and you're gonna look amazing in that dress. All the 13-year-old boys at the bar mitzvah are gonna be schwitzing for you in that dress. Cute. So can you turn the video back on? Uh, I have 15 minutes left in the workout. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Chris Sullivan, this is us. Yeah, thanks for having me. We are so thrilled to have you. It's your first time here, yeah? It is my first all time right, here. All right, all yeah. right. Well, um, welcome to Build. Uh, we have to talk about last week, last week's episode. Let's get into Lots it. Lots to talk about. Uh, so <laughs> to recap, spoiler alert, um, your fiance, Kate, learns that she is pregnant. She finds out that she's pregnant. I know, I know. What's going to happen next on This Is Us? <laughs> Nobody knows. Everybody's <laughs> panicked about it. We're panicked about it because she has not yet told your character, Toby. No, she has not told Toby. I, I hope it happens this episode. I think it will. Um, and we'll see how he reacts. I imagine, well, he re reacts well to most things, I think. Well, that's not true. But he reacts positively to things that are positive, inherently positive. So we'll see. I think he's. I think uh, she's been holding off telling him for a little bit. Sure. Uh, for a couple of reasons, we think, right? Probably because of the way he reacts to things. <laughs> yeah. Probably his overreaction, his tendency towards, towards uh, uh, panic, or his tendency towards. Uh, uh, th uh, throwing a party or his tendency towards anxiety. So yeah. Yeah, he ha he has a lot of overt gestures. Yes. Yes. Yeah, he has he he is is known for the grand gestures. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I love that about it. Um, I love that about the show, and I love that about the that you guys as a couple. Um, how do you think that their relationship has grown since you started on the show until now? That now we're in season two. Yeah, you know we're in season two, and and we kind of started off as we got to know them uh, with a lot of those grand gestures, a lot of the romance, a lot of the infatuation, um, and I think as they have gotten to know each other and as they've kind of developed a relationship, they've realized that a lot of the hard work that is done in relationship is is by digging into the pain or digging into the suffering um, of your partner and sharing that with, uh, with, with the person that you are, are partnering with. Yeah, and I think vulnerability is at a lot of uh, where you guys are at, too. Yeah, it's the name of the game. You know, right now, especially in our, in our society in general, I think vulnerability might be the antidote to a lot of the feelings of separation and, and I, I isolation that we are all feeling in our own little pockets of the world. And, and I'm very proud to be on a TV show that speaks that language. Why do you think so many people are really resonating with you two as a couple? Because I think like, when, you, when I'm watching it, you know, I'm just like, wow, I can relate to a lot of different parts of that. Um, yeah, I think, I think certain people want to romanticize it and they want to think that it's all perfect and it's all, um, it's all lovey-dovey and grand gestures and all of those things. And those things are all good. So I think people are, I think people relate because even even in the hard times or even in the difficult times, they lean towards each other. And they, instead of uh, when faced with conflict or with um, some kind of difficult uh, 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 speed bump, that they lean in mm -hmm. and they lean towards the relationship instead of leaning away from it. Your character provides a lot of 
comic relief, I think, in a show. Um, do you have any say in some of the script, or do you ad lib anything? Um, you know, I, it, it depends on the director. When our, when our executive producers, who also direct, when they're in charge, they'll give us a little more leeway. But um, for the most part, we just try to stick to the script. Uh, the words are already beautifully written. Um, and yeah, luckily I have I have been given a uh, the task of of maintaining comic relief, but uh, I'm I'm doing my best, and and I've talked to the writers about this about uh, being part of the the comic relief without coming off too much like a clown. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of your your outfits and your your clothing choices. Do you have a say in anything that you you put on? I mean, yeah, yeah. when I show when I show up at the costume fittings, they have options and yeah. I get I get I get to vote, but I'm not the final vote, not yeah. even not even close because um, there are so many other uh, there are so many other things that go into the decision making uh, of of what any of us wear uh, beyond whether we like it or not. I mean, they want us to feel good and they want us to feel happy with the choices that are made. But um, but yeah, I I so far have not been disappointed. Yeah, I, as a fan, as well, as a viewer, I'm not disappointed. A lot of people were surprised when they learned that you actually wear like a costume to make you look bigger. Um, yeah. Were you surprised that people were surprised about that? Um, I I guess. I, I guess I wasn't surprised. Like th they did a really good job on the on the costume, um, and there's no reason, unless unless uh, unless it was a poorly done costume, why anyone would know. Um, but yeah, the the kind of response to it, I guess. You know, we all have we all have different responses to to things that we believe are are true when we find out that they are not, mm -hmm. um, and. There's also a bit. There's also a bit of a of a of a, a culture today of outrage being a bit of a hobby um, for for certain for certain people, and and especially with this show, where there's so much to love about this show, people are just looking for one thing <laughs> to not like about the show, um, and so a couple people attached to um, the costume as as a bit of a, uh, a betrayal or a deceit, but. The, the thing that they're not realizing is that Toby, you know, the, the logistics of wearing a costume like that allows me to travel back and forth through time. Now, we know Toby was, was, was married before and, and because of the divorce gained a bunch of weight. And so there was a time when he was skinnier. And so the costume allows, if they want to, for us to jump back and forth through time. Um, and so there's just there's other there's other logistical things involved in the decision making. Again, there's like a thousand things that go into each of these choices, um, other than, and hopefully I was just the best actor for the job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. Well, take me back to that um, audition. I know that you were spotted on your previous show by some of the casting directors yeah. for this one. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, Ooh, we're good. Oh, well, let's have it. Let's have <laughs> yeah, some. Well, let's take a moment. We have some time. <laughs> um, there was a show that I filmed here in uh, in New York called The Nick that was on Cinemax. It starred Clive Owen, and it was this uh, period drama uh, about medicine uh, in the year 1900, New York City. And so the the executive producers of This Is Us saw that show, and I don't know what they saw in in me in that show that thought, oh, this guy could be a fun loving. <laughs> uh, uh, romantic interest for one of our leads um, because he was this brutal kind of Irish thug. Um, but they brought me in. I, maybe they just wanted to meet me. I don't know. Uh, uh, but I was, in, I was in Los Angeles and my agents had called and said, hey, the, they want to put you on tape. Um, they're seeing people in L.A., but they want to put you on tape. And I said, well, I'm in L.A. I was, I was shooting a film called Live by Night with, uh, with Ben Affleck. And, and they said, well, go, go right. Can you go in tomorrow morning? I was like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, if it's early enough, because I'll be on my way to the airport. So on my way to the airport, back to, to, to fly home here, I stopped at, at Fox and auditioned for This Is Us, and a couple weeks later, found out I got it. Wow, I'm glad you didn't get on that flight uh, yeah. too early, because <laughs> right. your life would be really different. Yeah, it would be very different. Speaking of which, how much has your life changed being on one of the you know top-rated shows on primetime television you know my life uh, my life hasn't changed all that much other than i, I now live in los angeles okay. and and there are more people who know who i am on the street or who know maybe not know my name but know that i play a character named toby <laughs> um, um i can always tell i can always tell when when somebody has recognized me 
and they're not quite sure where from and have started to do a little phone research because they come up and go, I'm sorry, are you Chris Sullivan? And I'm like, there's no way you knew my name was Chris Sullivan. <laughs> there's no way. I think we no need way. like a Shazam for the <laughs> yeah. phone just to put yeah. it up, right? You, like you, you could, they, you'd see this. They're like. <laughs> Oh my God, Chris Sullivan! <laughs> Chris Sullivan! That happened to me backstage at a show here. I, was, I did a Broadway show called Nice Work If You Can Get It. And, and, and Broadway shows, there's like 50 producers on these things that, that, that put money in. Um, there are some executive producers, but there's all these producers and all these producers bring people to see the show and, and friends and all of these things. And this producer, uh, was backstage with a bunch of people and I could see him off to my left and I was talking to somebody and I saw him look at his program. Hey, Chris! Chris! <laughs> so somebody who I worked for didn't even know my name. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'd say that's the, that's the major change is as, uh, I have friends everywhere I go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you've done a lot of theater work and you've done a lot of Broadway. How has that helped uh, you with This Is Us, for example? Um, you know, the... The theater work that I've done over the last 15, 20 years uh, is the, the foundation for, for everything I do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's where all of my training lies. And so bringing, bringing all of that training uh, into a day of shooting on This Is Us is just about taking it from an audience of 2,500 seats to an audience of one which would be the camera, and, and, and boiling all of those choices down to very small uh, facial expressions or small movements, or you know, in Toby's case, maybe not so small movements. There's definitely some overacting involved. <laughs> um, it was my minor in college, overacting. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it, it all applies. Well, it's a good role for you then. It's a good fit, the yeah. overacting. <laughs> yeah, I think this is probably the closest uh, to myself uh, uh, that a character that I've ever played. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what part of Toby do you identify with the most? I identify mainly with the using uh, his sense of humor as a shield and, and kind of leading with that. Um, that's always a safe way to enter a room, kind of distract people from from getting to know me. <laughs> <laughs> we um, all have it. I mean, Kate does yeah. that too. I mean, she, not the sense of humor, sure. but she's close too. And I think uh, yeah. they're a good pair because he sort of brings her out of her shell. Yeah, you know, I think as, as, as young people in this world, we all develop maybe um, de defense mechanisms to survive in this world. And as we get older, if we're not careful, those defense mechanisms develop into coping mechanisms. And then those coping mechanisms just become part of our personality and we don't even question them anymore. They're just a part of the routine or a part of the, the shtick or a part of however we interact with people. And it's, it's nice to sometimes sit back and take a look at those things and be like, why do I, why do, I do that? Yeah. What am I trying to avoid? Or what am I trying to hide? Or what am I trying to um, subvert by entering a room with a joke? You know? <laughs> We've all, we're all guilty of it, yeah. that's for sure. I personally want to find out more about Toby's background. We, you know, we see a lot of the younger versions of a lot of the cast members, but we don't know much about Toby yet. Yeah, you know, the, the, the Miguel and I are, are the, like the last two, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of Beth. We don't know a lot of backstory there either, but um, I think as the seasons go on, we'll get a chance to, uh, to kind of figure those things out. We, what do we know so far? The other part is that like all the little tidbits of information about Toby are spread out over what would now be 22 episodes. So it's hard to piece them all together. But we know that he was married before. Mm -hmm. That we've seen her. The we've seen her right? yeah. That she cheated on him and he went through a depression, gaining a lot of weight. We know that he's in IT and that he owns his own company. Um, we know that he has a mom and a sister. Those, those characters have been mentioned. So as we piece all these things together, uh, we'll see as, as maybe as this season goes on, I don't know what they have planned, um, but uh, we'll see what else we learn. Yeah, how far out do you get the script? I mean, you haven't shot everything yet, right? For this no, season, right? We're, shooting, yeah. we're shooting episode 10 right now. Okay. They started maybe two or three days ago and we got the script like four days ago. 
Okay. So the scripts have been piling up a little bit as we get towards the back end of the, uh, we, got, we got a text message from Dan Fogelman today letting us know that. I know that you all like to do a lot of preparation work and we're getting the scripts out as fast as we can uh, and, and they'll be to you shortly. But, um, but yeah, we got a little backed up, I think, in the, in the story department. Um, so we don't get the scripts very, very far in advance. But at the beginning of the season, our showrunners uh, and Dan sat us all down and told us where they were going this season, what they were planning on, things like that. So we have an idea of, uh, of what the whole season looks like for each of our characters. That's cool. Um, of course, viewers are you know, enamored with the, uh, the death of Jack Pearson. Right. How did Jack die? Miguel murdered him. Right. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the craziest theory you've heard? <laughs> <laughs> to steal his beautiful Mandy Moore wife. Yeah. <laughs> and now the murderer lives in the house. <laughs> that burned down, maybe. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, well, the, the weird part is, is that in this, in, this, in this spoiler culture where none of us want to know what happens, but we all engage in, in forums that might ruin it for us, it's almost like this adrenaline sport that we play where we're like ducking and dodging information and la 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 at the office. And, and um, I'm not quite sure what it's about wanting to spoil it for others or spoil it for ourselves or get the information out of order or we just gotta know now, I gotta know. If I don't know, then I don't know and I can't handle not knowing. Um, because I've definitely been in that place and it's like, let's just, let's just let these storytellers reveal to us the information that we need as it comes. Um, because the other, the other crazy part is like, yeah, if you guess, every possible way that someone can die, <laughs> chances yeah. are you might get it because it's not gonna be something crazy like a Sharknado that took him out. Or, or, Although, you know, I've been on stage with the Sharknado cast before yeah. and the, you know, yeah. it's, at this point. A crossover, <laughs> could you imagine a This Is Us yeah. Sharknado <laughs> crossover? Synergy. <laughs> Maybe Sharknado 20, that will there happen. You <laughs> you know, there you you'll, go. You know, This Is Us will have ended and then it'll just Literally happen. jumping the shark. <laughs> But Toby Thank doesn't you. even know that, you know, he's trying to get information from Kate about her dad and her background. So, right. You know. Yeah. I think he, he knows that, that that connection is going to be important for them if they're going to trust each other, if they're going to confide in each other, and if they're going to um, build a solid base for a long-term relationship. That's the type of stuff that you have to, you have to get into. You know, you, you can bang two metals together all you want, and they're never going to be forged until you apply heat, you know? And, and there's, no there's no relationship that comes stronger from a really nice weekend. Yeah, it's true. Like, that's not, that's not a, you're not strengthening a relationship. You're enjoying an already strong relationship. And so going through all of those things is painful, but it's necessary. And so we'll see how they do it. I think another hurdle is um, Toby and the Pearson family. Yeah. Because they're so tight. Seriously. I mean, we've, we're seeing... Pearsons. Right. It's a guy got to do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're trying so hard, man. Yeah, you I'm know? doing my best. Maybe trying a little too hard sometimes, <laughs> Toby. Why don't you calm down? <laughs> do you think he tries a little too hard? You're like, okay, I'm settle down a little bit. Sometimes. Yeah. You know, my, my favorite was, the, was the, the, I know how I'll get in. I'll get in through Miguel. Like, that was my favorite so far, because they finally put it in there, and they mixed it way down, but John Huertas and I, I like saying his name, John Huertas, <laughs> um, we have a joke that every time Toby sees Miguel, Toby speaks to Miguel in Spanish, and Miguel just responds in English, <laughs> and neither of them comment on it. <laughs> and so... I think it's the most, I think it's the funniest thing in the world. John thinks it's hysterical. <laughs> the editors just cut it out every time until that last episode where they come in the house and I got, hey, como estas? Yay. Yeah. And so finally I got it in. I was cheering. But um, how did we get here? I don't know how we got I here. don't know. Yeah, just get the hurdles of getting into the Pearson family because, you know, you're trying with right. Kevin and I tell you, it's just pigs tough. in a blank, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, you're good at that, but, you know, you yeah. got to do more. But at least it keeps us watching every week, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I, uh, you know, you're, you're not only on this show, you were on Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was a very cool show to be a part of, yeah. albeit, albeit a short, um, you know, appearance on mm -hmm. that. What mm -hmm. was it like to be part of that cast? Did you know Stranger Things was going to be as big as no, it was going to be? No, there's no way you can know, right? There's, 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 so for, if, yeah, for anyone who, who, who's like, what? 
Stranger Things? Is that what is that what's going on in the back? He wasn't in Stranger Things, was he? Was he the monster? What was he in the Stranger Things? Um, I played uh, Benny Hammond, the guy who owns the diner in the first episode, um, who who brings uh, uh, Eleven in to kind of figure out what's going on, and then they murdered him in the head immediately at the uh, at the end of that episode. Um, but the Duffer uh, the Duffer brothers. We, I knew they had an awesome story, and I knew that they had held out year after year after year because they wanted to direct it, and no one would let them direct it. And they said, okay, well, we'll, t we'll go somewhere else. And they would take it to the next place and say, we got this project, people. We love the project, and, but we want to direct it. Uh, we, we don't want to let you direct it. And so they went, I know they, did, they went through a lot of that, and so I was very excited to be a part of a project that the, that the, the creative heads had such an investment in. And you, I knew it was an exciting story to tell, but you, can, you just can never, like with This Is Us, you know that you're telling a good story and you know that it's a true story as far as, as, far as it being honest or it being from a place of, of, uh, of honesty. Um, you know, even, even, in, even in a story like uh, Stranger Things, it might be outlandish and unrealistic, but it, there's a groundedness to it um, that you know, you, you're not worried. Like, you might not know that it's going to be this huge juggernaut, but you're not worried. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you have another film coming up soon, I think. Um, what's that one about? Uh, are you talking about Walden? Yeah, Walden. Yeah, Walden um, stars uh, Academy Award nominee Demian Bashir. Uh, it was directed uh, by my best friend Alex Harvey. It's also got T.J. Miller in it and stars another one of my good friends, Eric Hellman. Um, and it is going to be in limited release soon. And it's about, uh, it's, it's based on Thoreau's novel Walden and about kind of how, about how nature and, you know, the modern corporate world clash against each other and how we're, how we're kind of pulled between those two, two worlds. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, I'd love to get some questions from the audience here. So let's, let it. It, let's make it happen. Hi, Chris. Hi. <laughs> I'm really excited. Um, What's person, your name? My name is Lizzie. Lizzie, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you in person. I love following you on Twitter. And a big shout out to the This Is Us fan crew. They're awesome. a very vocal, very, very, very vocal audience. <laughs> I want to say that I, my husband and I have been married 18 months and two days. Congratulations. It's my, it's my first marriage mm. and his second. And we see ourselves so much in the relationship between... Kate and Toby, and it was funny because my mother texted me the other day, and she said, "I decided to uh, to binge watch This Is Us." Oh my God, you're married to Toby! <laughs> and, and I laughed, and I said, "It took you long enough." <laughs> so tell her to be careful with that binge watching. This is us. That's like emotional warfare on yourself. Oh yeah, it's like like one or two episodes get her, at get a time. Take two a boxes of Kleenex, yeah. one bottle of Xanax, yeah. and it's all good. My question to you is: With this much history uh, on Broadway. Have you thought about coming back to do some in the hiatus? And what would be your dream role? Oh, dream roles. Uh, well, I would very much like to play Stanley Kowalski at some point. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I could play King George, if I could hit those notes in Hamilton. It's George, right, King George? Yeah. Um, but absolutely, I, I, I want to come back to the stage as soon as possible. It's, it's hard because uh, we only have four months off. And so the life of a, of a theatrical production, you know, it takes a good month and a half just to rehearse it, never mind another month of previews and then to get it open and to get a good run going. Um, but yeah, well, I'm trying constantly to get back to the stage. Yeah. Thanks for that question. Who's next? Um, hi, I'm Mallory. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, is it weird to see like Mandy Moore as herself and then as like a six-year-old woman? Yeah, yeah, old Mandy's weird. <laughs> old Mandy talks in that weird voice, that old, she's talking that old lady voice. She doesn't, she doesn't. Can you imagine if she came out with like, <laughs> she did like some weird character. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting because cause Mandy Moore as a, as a young woman, already has so much gravitas to her, so much like stature. She's like, and I mean this in the best way, she's the most grown up person I've ever met. You're like, I would go to you for advice on anything. Um, and so when she ages into the mother slash grandmother role, you're just like, yeah, that makes sense. Like <laughs> do you, that you pull that off too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting transition to watch happen. Who's next? Hi. Oh, hello. Hi. 
Uh, What's so your shirt you, say? Uh, food Film Fest. Nice. That was, just happened. Um, so you played uh, Taserface in Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, what was uh, playing that character like and wearing the makeup for that? Yeah, the, the, the makeup for, for that character, Taserface, uh, took about two and a half, three hours. Uh, it was about three quarters of an inch to an inch of, of silicone rubber around my, encasing my whole head. Um, and that, luckily that was, that was all. My, my makeup at two and a half, three hours was probably the shortest makeup anyone had to go through for that film. Minus Chris Pratt, he just shows up and put on, puts on a t-shirt. <laughs> And it's like superhero. Oh, it's that easy. Um, uh, and so the, the hardest part for that character was uh, contact lenses and fake teeth. So I had these big fake metal teeth and these contact lenses that, that made everything a blur. The entire, my entire shooting experience of that film is literally a blur. Um, I could barely see out uh, through them. Um, and I could barely speak through the teeth. So there was a lot of like sitting at home practicing, trying to figure out how to make sounds through all of that. And how to like, if I wanted, you know, the makeup to move like a quarter of an inch, I had to like contort my face to, to get this makeup to move. Um, so there were all these extra physical challenges that have nothing to do with acting, like that have nothing to do with character choice, nothing to do with saying your lines. like just extra hurdles to jump over. So it was, it was a real challenge, but that's why I liked it. Yeah. Cool. Well, Chris, thanks for coming by, Bill, today. My pleasure. This thanks is us. It airs tonight, 9 o'clock, NBC. Give it up one more time for Chris Thanks, Sullivan. everybody. Toby.